Hi there, Dolly friends. Here's a little peek of the nursery, which you remember. I took most of the things out of there, but I put some things in to um, show my little toy box that I made. I know many of you saw that video. If you didn't, it's in my videos list. You can go back and watch it. I'm really happy with it. And now it's time to remodel <laughs> the nursery. I had read somewhere that Victorian nurseries used pastel, which I know isn't everyone's favorite. And I had this paper, which I really liked. I got this paper on Picro. It's a public website that you can go and download images that are in the public domain and use them. You can print them or you could give a small donation and you know, pay for higher resolutions or even have prints mailed to you. But I find a lot of interesting images on that website. I'll leave a link in my description if you wanna take a look at it. So I know it looks pretty sloppy, but um, use your imagination and try to see my vision here. I'm playing with my trims and of course thinking of using a dark contrast, which I really like. I'm just setting it in there against the wall. Nothing's glued in. And I have, of course, my little fake wall on the right side there. I took out all my pieces and I just wanted to kind of play around with the colors. I want to use paint to make a stain on the baseboard and on the, the little partitions because I think I can get the color I want better a little bit darker and I'm just want to play around with it a little bit. I decided that I want to have painted floors. So I have my popsicle sticks out. They're about five eighths of an inch across, which would be a nice wide plank. There is some historical evidence for painted floors, even in the Victorian times. Um, and certainly up through from pre-Victorian times up through the early part of the 20th century. My own home, which is a bungalow, was built somewhere between 1900 and 1910. And the bedrooms have painted floors. If I can find a clean spot, I'll insert a little picture here. Um, and they are... I'm not sure if they're pine. The oak floors are in the main part of the house, but I'm not sure what type of wood this is. At any rate, I, th I really like that mustardy yellow color that I kind of used on the toy box that I made. I know you've seen that video. But I, in order to get the color that I want and the look I want, I'm gonna have to put a darker underbase by a stain or something like that. You can see the brighter yellow stick on the left is just maybe a little bit too bright. But I thought it might be a nice rich contrast to the, or complement rather, to the pastel color that's, that's on the wallpaper. So the painted floors would have been in the rooms that weren't public, that weren't the parlor or lounge room, more bedrooms or even the scullery. So I'm just playing around with my colors and my ideas. just thought I would try the chocolatey look too and maybe see the color I want to use for the baseboards and the wainscoting. Um, I did dry brush a little bit of brown onto the yellow and I really like that. What do you think? Because I started out a little bit gingerly with diluting my paint too much, I ended up going over everything several times over, which probably wouldn't be necessary if you're more certain with <laughs> what you want. I need to learn to trust myself. Thus far, the trimming of the popsicle sticks is proving to be the most <laughs> difficult part. My trusty miter shears don't wanna cut this apparently very strong wood I guess they're for very heavy popsicles. 
Um, yeah, this is not gonna work out. <laughs> I thought about getting my Dremel out and sawing them up, but I, uh, I'm afraid of my Dremel, so it's still in the box from Christmas. But I did end up finding a way to do it. Here's a little demonstration. It still took a while. Just double checking that I'm still happy with the contrast and the colors. I know the pattern of the wallpaper will darken a little bit when I mod podge over it. Don't be alarmed. I do know that this the bottom is uneven. That's because my templates are uneven. I'll have to make sure I adjust them. But the placement of the trims will hide that. You won't notice I planned it all out, which of course is not the same as pulling it off. We'll see what I can do. All right, I'm ready to clean and apply the wallpaper. I have to tell you that I have just the tiniest little feeling that this might not work out. Yeah, it looks really bad right now and I don't have 100% confidence that it will dry flat like my other paper did. So I'm distracting myself by putting the understain on my floor. I did decide to use my stain because it would be an even color. Just wanted to lay it all out against my template to make sure I had enough sticks. And I do, I really like the way it looks and it seems a shame to paint over it, but I'm going to. Before I go ahead and do that, I'm going to need a little bit of additional trim pieces. So I wanted to show you how I did that. I just took one of the larger trims and cut it in some pieces. And look at this nifty little sanding tool my friend Tina sent me. She's working on a vintage mid-century dollhouse and she surprised me with that in the mail. All right, I'm gonna get started. Uh, before I do, I should probably mention that after an overnight setting, the wallpaper did dry tight up against the wall. I have to tell you, I was shocked. It's kind of magic the way it happens because it felt pretty dry to me when I left it that night. So I wasn't really hopeful that it would be good by the morning, but it was. So I'm going to carry on. I'm using just the teeny tiniest bit of water on my brush as I do this. Um, and I'm pretty happy with the way it's turning out. My only concern at this point is having enough paint. Time to get started gluing. I'm using wood glue. I don't know if that this is necessarily the best way to do it. I, I mean, I like doing it one by one, but putting the glue on the paper, I don't know if that's, that's how I did it last time. This seemed to take a little longer because when I cut the pieces to fit as I was going along, it was, it's just harder to cut them. Subscriber Christy W. suggested I use books to keep my floor more evenly flat. I was using some rocks I had before. I was thinking more in terms of like weight than evenness, but I do have some pretty heavy books. Thanks, Christy. to trim with my exacto the few pieces that were extended past the border here's the floor in and some of the trim and the little detailed part of the trim I'm going to just put it there with some wax just temporarily so I can get the sizing right and that little detail piece in the corner see how much I want and I'm gonna let it sit overnight. 
Not sure what I'm gonna do about that wall on the right, so I'm just gonna leave that for now. I'm going to take you into my own parlor to show you the things I bought at the craft store. Um, I bought this little line of stickers, bling stickers, that I thought I could use as little rivets and things for some minis that I was trying to make. If you watch Little Gretchen's workshop, you'll know that she did a whole series on making bags and luggage. This is my sad little bag <laughs> that I made. It's a little mini binder clip covered in leather. I know it's really bad. I know it's really bad, but you know, if I put it next to my little girl here, it kind of looks like a little book bag or something. I thought I could use it to embellish this little bag and make it look like there were some little closures on it. Something like that. I also bought some different colored clay to use in animation. I'm trying to get my doll's eyes to blink. So if I can get that to work, I'll show you. I found these little mini cloches, and I just thought these would be so cool in my parlor to put a little assemblage inside or you know how there's those those wedding cloches and dried flowers and things that were kept under these cloches and used as part of the decor i think they were like 4.99 or 5.99 for two of them they're made out of glass And there's two, as you can see. Thought those were really neat. And I saw these. These I thought I could use for a lighting in my parlor. Now in my own home, I'll show you a picture. I have, I just call it a pan light. And like I said, my house is later. It's not Victorian era. It's early 20th century, probably around 1905, 1910. And it had original light fixtures in it, including the one I'm showing you. It's just a very lightweight metal pan with some, some lights hanging down. And you've seen this style before. I don't know what the, I don't know what the actual design name is called but I thought I could do something similar with these, even maybe finding a way to create the look of light inside. This is a really cool brooch that I have, and it is sterling, so I'm not really wanting to do anything to it, but something similar, you know, where I would maybe hang these pieces with some chain from there and then some chain on the top. So I'm gonna be looking for a piece like this. And that's it. Don't go away yet. Let's go back to the nursery so I can show you how the floor looks. Here's a little preview. It is not done. Keep in mind that it is not done. The trim work and stuff is not done and I need to do a little clean up. I actually have another idea that I'm going to incorporate into the floor, but I'm not going to tell you about it. You'll have to wait and see. And I need to finalize the trims, etc. But I'm happy with the wallpaper. I know there's a seam there, but that's how it would have been. In reality, there would be seams. I love this kind of tropical look with the pastels mixed with the darker green, I think looks really pretty and nice for the nursery. So it needs to be filled up, of course, and I need to kind of finalize those trim pieces and seal the wood with some Mod Podge. But like I said, I just have those pieces in there with wax right now, so they will be finalized. And I'll let you know when I do more of the detail work, you will see and we'll put some things back in the nursery. We'll put some 
pictures on the wall and it'll be a work in progress just like the parlor. I so appreciate you stopping by to watch this video, especially if you've subscribed. If you haven't and you'd like to, just hit the subscribe button. It's very easy. Thank you for all your helpful comments. They mean so much to me and they really help me out. I hope you'll come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard. Bye everyone.